Hello people, welcome back to a new episode of Blitz Gaming. In this episode we play Star Trek. Star Trek Online. We're going to make a new Star Trek Discovery character. A new tutorial they just brought in. So, this is the screen we see. And there's a lot of changes. And we're going to make a discovery character. So this is the new new uh, tab up the top left. Um, it's basically, I've, I've, I'm guessing, I think it's about six missions, a tutorial, where you can play discovery. And after that, um, you go onto the original game and do the same missions throughout uh, what career you want to do. So if you want to be a Klingon, Romulan, after level 10, it's the same for everybody. And you got obviously, like I said, the original series. So you can play the original series tutorial. And you obviously get their spaceships and uniforms and so on. So on. Uh, Dominion, um, I think you get these people at level 60, as it says there. But I don't think you can actually make one unless you've got a level 60 character already. You got a Romulan, you got obviously you got the, uh, the Romulan tutorial, and obviously their their missions with like I said, I think up to level ten or something like that. They're all different from the Starfleet and again Klingons. Level ten again, all different missions from some Starfleet and the Romulans. And then you got original Starfleet, which the game was when it first came out many moons ago, what, uh, nine years ago. Yeah, you got a tutorial, a tutorial on here as well, if you want to start in the 21st century. And you obviously got loads of uniforms from uh, Voyager, Generations, Deep Space Nine. There's quite a few others as well. And obviously you got the character traits to go through. There's plenty of them. So all the traits different from what class you want. Uh, what race you want, sorry. Um, or do you want to marry each one up? So if you want to be a science officer, Vulcan's good. Um, I'm going to be an engineer, which is basically, basically good at everything. I'm not quite sure who's good at tactical. If you go through them, you can find out the best. But since we're playing Discovery, we only have a choice of three, which is going to be human, Vulcan, and alien. I mean, if you're new to Star Trek, um, the best ship to play and the best class to be is an engineer, because you get a cruiser and you've got plenty of shields. There's no special stuff about doing. Uh, lowering enemy shields and firing. The cruiser is a good all-rounder. Got plenty of armor, big shields, and he can fire back plenty as well. And if you want to be a damage dealer, obviously you want to put a tactical ship and a tactical character, so you get loads of traits and abilities to do massive firepower. And on science, you get the best shields in science, but you get things like shield drain. Um, on the enemy, damaging their weapons, as in making it work for a while. They've got all special abilities. So probably the hardest character to play, and the easiest ones to be an engineer with a cruiser. And on this screen, you can spend all day picking how your character wants to be. Now on the right hand side, you obviously got fixed faces. But there's a little tab down below, says um you can zoom in now you got a um, head body uniform and if you got a head then we can uh, do all the features separately so on this screen you can see there's literally loads and loads of setups you can go through With complexion tattoos scars Hairstyle, 
color of hair goes on and on and then you obviously got you can do the body as well and obviously uniform well in this case we've got discovery but you can change the uh, insignia as you go high level that should change automatically but you can obviously change the colors uh, as things go and you obviously can save the outfit for your crew members as well and when you get I think past level 10 you start getting crew members join you and they'll be on different uniforms uh, basically the modern Star Trek uniforms and what you can do you can go to the tailor pick on your officers and change their uniforms to the discovery if you want to keep the discovery theme now you can also do it with Star Trek the original series and obviously generations um, all, the, all the style of styles of clothes I had now I've got a lot of unlocks um, there will be some stuff you'd have to purchase but you purchase it with Zen uh, it's an in-game currency you collect as you're playing and idea you want to keep it all the way until you get to level 65 I know there are a lot of people out there will be resisting it saying no I want to update my weapons update my shields update other stuff but if you want a T6 ship you want to keep all the Zen into the last minute and you should have a pretty a pretty good amount by the time you get to level 65 now unfortunately the Zen the price of Zen changes from day to day now I would say maybe if you got to level 65 you might have enough to buy a T6 ship uh, again as I said you need about a million to get a T6 ship I can't remember how much I got when I got to level 65 but I had about three or four characters when I played and you must remember when you buy a T6 ship or any tier ship they unlock for all your characters you have um, as long as obviously the Federation is Federation uh, Federation ship can't work with Klingon or Romulans so you got to remember that but there are packs where you get cross faction packs you can buy and we'll have a look at those as we play the game so now we're just naming our ship we're going through the, the naming procedure the other thing, Refine Zen, is available to all your characters. So you can pick what type of ship you want across the board uh, to make life easy for yourself. I still can't believe how much things have changed. We hadn't heard from the Klingons for years. And now we have. Now, the Federation is at war. That was probably the last thing on my mind when I got here. It was the same for you, right? We came to Starfleet Academy to become explorers. Not all of us are fighters. Some of us are engineers, healers, scientists. We've been working hard on the ground and in space. We learned how things worked on a starship. And we learned how to work as a team. We've been getting ready to boldly go where no one has gone before. And today's your big day. Today you graduate and begin your career as a Starfleet officer. It's gonna be amazing. Not bad intro. This is where we start. If you're not seeing Discovery, Star Trek Discovery, it's actually on CBS All Access and Netflix. Now we've got to find Tilly. We're we'll able to pick our own. Hey, there you are. Are you excited? I am very excited. Pretty soon we'll be reporting for duty on the cadet training cruise. Are you kidding? 
I set up a triple layer alarm sequence to notify me when the postings went up. I think I knew before some of Captain Schaefer's staff. Two words, Chief, Engineer. Right? I'm still not sure if this isn't one of Finnegan's pranks. He's done stuff like this, you know. Ugh, poor Jim Kirk. Oh, uh, before I forget, Lifeson is looking for you. Actually, I think I see him over there. You should probably find out what he wants. Okay, this can't want the next person. What is the story? So what do we do? Here's Lifeson, one of the best tactical cadets in your class. Uh, oh, uh, oh, after Evelyn, of course. <laughs> there you are. I wanted to thank you for helping me pass that final, and for all the other times you've helped me. Seriously, I might not have made the cadet cruise if it weren't for you. I hope Schaefer recognizes all you've done to lead our class. Have you got your assignment yet? Huh, well, Lieutenant Tassilne has all of the assignments now. I'd see what she knows. Before you do that, do me a favor and talk to Ian. He's got good news, and he won't settle down until he shares it with everyone, including you. Oh, there's Ian. Let's find out what his big news is. Yeah, let's go and see Ian. See what he's got to say. Cadets Quan and Peart, with a combined IQ of 231, which, I've heard, is almost up to Tamav's rating. That's the rumor, anyway. Oh, hey. I've been looking for you. Yes! I took the linguistics final again, and I aced it! <laughs> you and me both. It wouldn't have happened if I didn't follow your advice. You saw that I wasn't at my best that day, told me to give it another shot. So, I did. That perfect score really made a difference. Now I'm qualified to serve as both a science officer and a communications officer. Thanks. Always good to have options, right? Kiro took your advice too. I think it worked out for him since he's slightly less scowly than usual. Uh, let me know if I'm right, okay? I think I see Kiro over there. Come on. Come on. This way. Yeah, hold on, hold on. I'm getting old. You know I'm in the academy. And here we have the smartest person in your class, or so I've heard. It's not entirely fair. Hero is a super genius and he's built like a brick shit. Uh, uh, yep, yes. Cadet, it is agreeable to be in your presence. Your advice regarding Federation history was advantageous. It allowed me to pass the final test with satisfactory marks. I am pleased. In the interest of camaraderie, I now inform you that Captain Schaefer is still selecting the senior staff for the upcoming training crews. There is a 78.4% chance that you will be selected for a position. Based on my current statistical models, Lieutenant Tassil may have more conclusive data on the matter. Your mini-map shows you where your objectives are. An arrow will Come appear on, on the mini-map if you are far away from your objective. Oh, actually, I shall not have rushed now. I've decided I actually want to quite start on Earth. Going around a galaxy and getting shot at by God knows who. Well, you better make me top man, otherwise I'm not going to be pleased. Good afternoon, cadet. How may I be of assistance? It is. I will access your assignment data now. One moment. Your assignment is not listed. Inquiries on the matter have been directed to Captain Schaefer himself. That remains to be seen. I suggest you report to Captain Schaefer and ask him personally. He is in the office behind me. So before we go on, let's have a look at the, uh, our character screen, ship screen. So this is our ship, what we have at the moment. And obviously under skills, as we level, we get more skills, more traits. I mean, you can set them up as you want, um, as you play. 
and we've got the stations at the moment we've got no other people because we are not part of Starfleet yet but as um, things go on we fill those, those seats with uh, crew people and this is an event which is actually on at the moment but it runs out in about five days so there's no point me doing it on this character because I've already done it already the events by the way they're on they come in the summer and at the winter and on the anniversary of Star Trek's and if you want a, a T6 ship and you haven't got to make the buy one a T6 ship will always be available on the event for free just gonna go for the graphics um, there's a bit, of, a bit of a bug on this screen uh, but in the meantime we just go through the, the tabs the audio controller basic there's still all the features we can do voice chat we've got a microphone we want to talk to people in a group display you can see we're playing in HD 1080p It's a bit of a bug where I've noticed it, it's dark, and the reason being, the game company Arc they changed the lighting system. You see their lighting too. About a year ago or two years ago, and ever since then the lighting's always been weird. I mean, it's too dark and was too light. I don't know why they didn't leave it as it was, but it's when they released the console version of the game, they said they wanted to have the same consistency across all the. Uh, platforms so that's why they've added lightning too but it's a lot of pain in the backside if you ask me especially when you're fighting in space and there's loads and loads of weapons going off it can be very very bright on the screen a quick look around and you see it soon brightened up when I change it to lighting two. I think so I've got to try and figure out a setting where I can have lighting two on and turn everything else off. Um, like I said, when you we get fighting, you yeah, yeah. soon notice uh, where it's really, really awful. So let's go and see the boss. See what we've got to say. Good to see you, Cadet. Today's the big day. Congratulations. Judging by that look on your face, I trust this visit concerns your assignment on the training cruise. Ah, uh, well, you can relax. I'm happy to report that you won't be my new bilge officer. <laughs> Far from it. There is a matter I'd like to address, however. Your academic record is impressive, but I don't see your results for the advanced phaser training program. Care to shed some light on that for me? The Federation is at war with the Klingon Empire, Cadet shouldn't need to remind you that Klingons enjoy close combat with their enemies. That in mind, I want everyone on my senior staff to complete that program. No exception. I did indeed. There's a place for a cadet like you on my bridge, once you finish that phaser course. My chief engineer and tactical officer have programmed a training simulator for you. I look forward to seeing your results. Cadets Tilly and Surveyor, respectively. They've been working on the simulation for me for some time now. Interesting pair, those two. Some of the staff question bringing Tilly along on the cruise as a junior, but her professors assure me that she's up for the task. Indeed, she'll meet you out in the quad. Talk to her to start the training, and I'll see you when you're finished. That's all. Well, we've got to go and do some shooting. Well, I don't want to get a gun. I'm the captain of the ship. I'll leave that to the crew. I still can't believe I got the chief engineer spot. Yes, it's just for the cadet training crews, but still, how many juniors get to go on the cruise, let alone as a department head? This is exciting. <laughs> okay. Whew. Yeah, I was wondering why he wanted us to set up the program for you. Now I know. Hey, I should warn you, it can get pretty lively with the Klingons and aggression, and I should probably stop telling you about the program now. Oh, no, don't worry. You'll do fine. There's no doubt in my mind. Come on, I'll take you there. Savea's waiting over at the simulator. You know how cranky she gets when people are late. 
Finnegan actually graduated. I guess the Irish are lucky after all. No one was assigned to a constitution class. Not even you. That's crazy. How many times did you run the Kobayashi Maru? Kirk's up to two now. To sprint, tap the shift key while moving. We better hurry or we'll lose our spot. Oh, I hate running. Uh-oh. There's Ev. And she's looking impatient. There you are. About time. Program's loaded and ready to go. I hope this is your lucky simulator. It's been nothing but bad luck for Kirk. <laughs> yeah, those are pretty useful in phaser training, huh? Too bad tricorders don't have a stun setting. You'd get top marks. Kidding? I'm kidding. The phasers are in the armory by the holodecks. Grab one there. <sighs> Running is the worst. Press the B key to scan the area. Your tricorder will point you toward your nearest objective. I noticed they've changed a few features uh, from the original series. Moved a few things around. Got different graphics on the, uh, the tricorder. It's pretty good. So we're going to find the, uh, the simulation route. There she is. The pistol has been automatically equipped. Just go to the center of the room. Choose your pain. In combat, right click on the target. Fire your weapon. While in combat, certain actions are disabled. Once you drop out of combat, more detail about ground combat will become available. So it plays like any other MMO. Click on the uh, one you want to shoot, and it, regardless of what you're doing, it will always shoot in the right direction. Nice work, Cadet. A few points below Severe's personal best, but it was your first try. You'll have plenty of opportunities to knock her from her perch at the top of the list once we're underway. That I do, Cadet. First officer station is yours. That's if you want it, of course. The bilge officer spot is still open. Thought you might say that. You've done well here, Cadet. I expect that trend to continue, onward and upward, throughout your career. Likewise. I'll see you on the bridge then. And congratulations. Wow, look at you, first officer. You're gonna do a great job. Congratulations. That thing the captain said about the bilge officer's spot was pretty funny, though. I mean, we don't even have those anymore. Wait, do we? Anyway, first officer. How does it feel? You know, I love her, but Savea is a little too, um, aggressive at times. If all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. I mean, that's her. She's very much a hammer kind of lady. I'm not saying she can't find her way to the center chair, but... Standing right here, Tilly. Might think about that if you want to make it to senior year. What? I'm kidding. Mostly. She's not wrong, though. We all have jobs to do, and you're gonna do great as the XO. Proud of ya. Seriously? Captain Schaefer didn't make that decision lightly. He believes in you, just like me. Even though you got me blown up in the Kobayashi Maru. Awkward. 
<laughs> well, we should get going to the shuttle bay. Everybody's waiting for the ceremonial send-off toast. Guess you get... Remember, your objective locations can also be found on your compass, as well as your mini-map. Now hear this. All cadets report to shuttle bay to prepare for departure. I did notice one more thing. Uh, Star Trek Discovery is based on the time of Kirk. So I'm not quite sure why we've got a holodeck. Okay. The rest of the senior staff is waiting just ahead. Time for your big speech. How are you going to play it? Inspirational? Heartwarming? That could be good. Hey, make Savea cry like just a single tear. Warrior style. Anyway, I'll meet you at the bar. No pressure. You're going to be great. Only thing I don't like about the game is the way the first person shooting is. Um, or third person shooting is. You can actually go to first person mode, but it still acts like an MMO. And I think they should make it like a first person shooter. Make it a lot more exciting. Um, I mean, the graphics are alright, but the animation is poor and you really ever can't go wrong. Let's get a toast to the crew. The other thing they should do, I think they should do a voiceover. When you're talking, and some characters you talk to don't speak back, so you've got to read the text. I'm not quite sure the idea behind it. One minute it works, one minute it don't work. I think they should rather do it or don't do it. Shall we go? It's time we got into space. Are you, ready to head to the ship? Are you ready to head to the ship? I can't believe we're finally doing this. Ooh, 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 look over there. That's the Glen, one of the new Crossfield class ships. No one really knows much about her or her capabilities. Well, at Starfleet Academy, anyway. Maybe we'll work on a ship like that someday. For now, our ship's here. She's a Malakowski class, Captain Schaefer's pride and joy. Good speed for her class, definitely maneuverable. A stout, solid, battle proven design, for sure. I can't wait to see what she can do. Let's land and find out. We need to check in with the deck officer first, then head to our stations. Oh man, I cannot wait to see the engine room. My engine room. Yeah! Sylvia Tilly, acting chief engineer, reporting for duty. Welcome aboard. What's your name, cadet? Ah, uh, yes, here we are. Acting First Officer, you're all set. Report to Captain Schaefer on the bridge. He's been expecting you. Use the turbo lift behind me. It'll take you directly there. The bridge we go. Bridge, please. I love these lifts. You go anywhere on a ship. Super lift. Let's take a quick look around. Nice looking ship. You see, it's uh, again, it's a bit too bright. Let's 
turn your lighting off. That's too dark. I really need to uh, sort out this this lighting problem. We'll leave it on for a minute, and we have to play around with the functions to try and get it right. Ah, there you are, computer. Note the executive officer has reported for duty in the ship's log. Welcome aboard, XO. You're right on time. All decks have reported in. We're ready to get underway. Let's start things simple by getting the old girl out of dry dock, huh? Contact dock control and get clearance to depart. After we're cleared, close the shuttle bay doors and disable the tractor moorings. Dock control has cleared us to depart. Acknowledged. Carry on. Shuttle bay doors are closed. Acknowledged. Carry on. Res, take us out. One quarter impulse. Straight from Star Trek 2. Noted, XO. Erez, take us out. Duly noted, XO. Erez, take us out. Maximum thrusters. Damn, I don't even get a chair to see on. Thank you, Mick, eh? Cleared from dry dock, Captain. Acknowledged, Helm. Set a course for Vulcan. Warp 4. Course laid in, sir. Engage. Incoming transmission. Captain, I'm picking up a distress call from the SS Fortuna. Audio only. Put them through, comms. Let them know we're on our way. Helm, lay in a rendezvous course. Altering course, sir. ETA, three minutes. Transporter room, prepare to beam over survivors. Sir, sensors can't read anything in the vicinity of the Fortuna. Communications are out as well. Keep trying to hail them, comms. XO, let's discuss the situation. Well, XO, you heard the distress call. What are your recommendations? Afraid not. This is the real deal. First Starfleet regs, we're the closest ship to the Fortuna, so it's our duty to assist. Not usually, no. Good instincts. How would you proceed here? Cool. There's something about this that's not sitting right with me. Agreed. Yellow alert. Surveyor, bring the shields up. Get down to the transporter room, XO. I want you to oversee the rescue efforts from there. Desmond, the Fortuna should be in range. Give me an update. I'm getting some weird readings. I can't get a solid lock. There may be interference. Trying to compensate. I think I have it. This is a lot different than the training scenarios. Beaming them over now. Klingons! Desmond, come in. What happened? Desmond, hold it.
Hold on. We're reading disruptor fire in the transporter room. The Klingons are beaming in on multiple decks. All hands, this is the captain. Repel borders. I repeat, repel borders. You have the command codes to unlock an armory near your position. Arm yourself and any security team members you find, and then repel any borders you come across. You let us worry about that. Right now, I need you doing what you can to get those Klingons off my ship. Bet you're glad you took that phaser course now, huh? Shoot straight and stay safe down there. Over here, Exo! We need you to unlock the armory! On the way. Let's get some weapons and take out those damn Klingons. You have to enter the command codes! Grab a rifle! We need to deal with the Klingons! You need to equip your phaser rifle. To do so, press the U key and select the captain option under the ship and crew heading. I've got a weapon. You can see it puts it on me back. Uh, there's a little wire next to the, uh, the, the rifle and it allows you to turn the uh, visual look off. Yeah! Make sure these Klingons are stuck! Damn, I just lost my new crew members. Flipping Klingons. I think they were going to engineering. Better hurry. There's a lot of them. Engineering, we're going in. No one takes over my ship. Security to engineering. Security to engineering. We are under attack. There's loads of different weapons in the game, specialised for the certain people like the Borg, the anti-Borg weapons. We're reading Klingon boarding parties on multiple decks, XO. Our security teams are spread thin. I need you to get to engineering and keep it secure. It's bound to be a priority target for the enemy. I'm on it, Captain. So we've got your back. This is the first person mode in the game. It don't actually play like a first person shooter, mind you. It's a game where you click on will automatically always shoot. Can't miss. It's a different way of playing the game. I'm not sure if it makes it any more exciting.
Move, move, move! Oh, am I glad to see you. You have no idea how happy I am to see you. <laughs> they were looking for something in here. Can't imagine what, though. I mean, they have warp and impulse tech. What else would be in engineering? Especially since the ship's a complete mess, thanks to them. Is there a part they didn't shoot? Sorry, I, I could really use your help, since you're here. As I was saying, the ship's taken a lot of damage. I'll do what I can to get the essentials online, but I could use some help. See anything you could do in here? Okay. I need you to get the structural integrity field out of the red. It's sitting at 15%, and that's, well, bad. I need you to boost the power flow and distribution rate at the two consoles back there. You'll need to stabilize the overall calibration, too, at the central console here. Got it? Sometimes missions specialized to your career class are available. Okay, so out his consoles. Being an engineer, I can do the consoles. If I was a science officer, they'd probably give me something else to do. And if he's a tech officer, um, they'd give me something else to do. Glad you're still with us. We could use a hand up here. We've taken casualties, and the Klingons could send more boarding parties at any time. Do what you need to do down there. And report to the bridge. Head back to the bridge. We'll cover this deck. I go back to the bridge we go. Damn, it's damaged all over the place. Damn, Klingons can't shoot straight. They might be out to use a bat left, but they can't shoot straight. Who is in command here? Speak now! I'm Captain Schaefer, and you are? I am Jaula of House Mokai. Surrender now, Captain. Why are you still able? Request denied. Get off my ship. Get off my ship. If you insist, Captain. John Drew! are gone so is the captain I'll try to find the Klingon ship oh, that was intense Klingons we just fought Klingons yeah you don't have to say mate Our medical assistance was adequate and necessary I thank you uh, oh, I thought I was done for Thanks. I'll be okay. Thanks to you. I owe you one. What, what, what happened here? Incoming transmission from the Klingons! Do I have your attention? Starfleet. Captain, are you all right? Silence! Surrender your ship and all classified data within it to me. Immediately! Safer, order your crew to 
to do as I say. Exo, follow my orders to the letter. Fire on my position. Damn, I want to make her pay. She's totally out of order. What, what do we do now? We do as the captain says. We go off that ship and blow out the galaxy. You ain't gonna get away that easy, Klingon. Just in case you noticed, the Klingons don't got no hair. In Discovery, the first series, they never had none, but the second series, they do. We're still here. Most of us, anyway. The captain. Look, the captain knew what was at stake. He gave the order, and you followed it. If you hadn't, we'd probably all be dead now. So, you're the captain now. We're with you. Let's make his sacrifice count. To sit, right-click on the chair you wish to sit in. I finally get me chair. I ain't gotta stand up no more. So now we're captain, we get our first officer for the bridge. Bridge officers add abilities to your ship in space and accompany you on away missions on the ground. What I do, I split my crew up from ground missions to bridge, bridge missions. Um, because obviously they've all got different traits and some traits are better on ground and some better on as a bridge officer. All decks have reported in. We took some casualties and sick bay is full. All systems have taken damage, but some were hit worse than others. Life support is stable. Past that, it's not exactly optimal. Working on it, but something's jamming our long range comms on all frequencies. Still running under cloak. We knocked them around pretty good before they slinked off with their tail between their legs. That said, we're in rough shape ourselves. Damage control teams are assigned. We've put out all the fires and started patching the hull breaches, but it's gonna take a while. We, um, we'll get the critical systems back online as soon as we're able, Captain. Still reading their distress signal. I can break through the jamming at short range. Shall I hail them? Opening hailing frequencies now, Captain. Greetings, uh, Captain. Uh, thank you for coming to my aid. I must apologize. I sent the distress signal under duress. Uh, I'm sure you'll do the same with a Klingon disruptor pointed at your head. Quite so, Captain. Our Klingon friends took pains to make my plight look convincing, uh, to the point of damaging my warp drive beyond function. Uh, at the risk of uh, wearing out my welcome, would you be so kind and assist me? I'd uh, rather not be around if the Klingons come back. Increase your speed using E. Decrease your ship speed by using Q. Use W and S to move up or down. Use A and D to turn left or right. Okay, let's go and save him. He certainly didn't have no plans to help me. But being a Federation and Starfleet, we've got to help everybody. Full stop, Captain. Uh, apologies. Okay. I'll wait for your command from now on. They need three or four warp induction coils, Tops. We can spare a few. Position yourself near the ship and press F to interact with it. 
Thanks. Oh, and uh, good luck with the Klingons, my young friend. You'll need it. Can't say I blame him. I wouldn't want to fight Klingons in a tub like that either. Speaking of... We have a problem. Most of our plasma injectors are a wreck. See, plasma injectors are made to take a beating, but this damage goes way beyond what would happen in a fight. Pretty sure the Klingons sabotaged them when they boarded us. They wanted to strand us here. Tamav is installing our spare injectors, but we're three short. Without those, we can't go to warp. We're not the first ship the Klingons have hit here, Captain. There's wreckage throughout the system. I recommend scanning the derelicts nearby. We may be able to find and recover intact plasma injectors from the wreckage. I'm picking up a few compatible parts in the wreckage. Blast off the outer casings on those units and we can get what we need. Press the space bar to fire energy weapons. I do prefer phasers to these cannons, I have to say. Pick up the goods, get me installed in the ship. Okay, these injectors are a little beat up, but I can work with them. Some of these are a real top shelf tech. Type J's with a two liter flow, modulating reserves, and those sweet new Comer Darbers. Gonna need a little time to get these installed. I'd rather not breach the core after we go to warp because of a full system meltdown. And that can happen with dicey injectors. Right, I'm on it, Captain. While engineering deals with the warp core, we're stuck here. We need critical systems back online ASAP. It's a sure bet the Klingons are making repairs. And they aren't as safety concerned as we are. They might be back and shooting faster than we'd like. We're on it, Captain. I located several Klingon military satellites nearby. Ian thinks we'll be able to reach Starfleet if we destroy the satellites, and I agree. Besides, we could use a little more target practice. You must be within 10 kilometers of an enemy to attack it. Use your phaser banks to weaken shielded targets. Captain, shall I send the distress signal? That Klingon ship took some real damage during the fight. I bet she's leaking plasma all over the place. We might be able to use that to find them. No argument here. I'd rather not get blown up by Klingons on a cadet cruise. Or, you know, ever, really. <laughs> Scanning now. Oh, yes! I found it! Sending you the data now. We can trace their plasma signature right back to the source. It'll show up on the map. It's pretty far from us. We should travel at full impulse to reach it. This will temporarily take power from the other systems, but vastly improve our speed. Once we drop out of full impulse, the power will return to other systems. Baka! Your death will be swift! Activate full impulse by clicking on the arrow. Deactivate full impulse by clicking on it again. Activate high yield torpedo by clicking on the icon or pressing Alt and 1. High 
high yield torpedo will increase the power of your next torpedo attack. Cling on ships, decloak it, Captain. <laughs> Captain, while we have the opportunity, it might not be a bad idea to review some of the basic starship combat files. Wouldn't hurt to be ready when the next group of enemies attack us out here. If you know it's Star Trek, the idea is to use the phasers, cannons, to lower their shields, Captain, while we have the opportunity, and then use the torpedo to blow them to pieces. Let's go by the drawings. Um, the other thing is that this ship's only got two two phases, one rear and one front. But ideally, you want to try and get them on the, on the sides here. So you've got more phases shooting at one target. But to shoot at torpedo, you got it's got to be in front of you or behind you. It would be wise not to follow me. Cowardly, but why? Click on a shield that is low on power to direct power to it. This will divert power from your other shields. Tamav and I need time to get the plasma and get started. Please don't break anything else. Target shields have failed. Incoming transmission, Captain. It's a Starfleet vessel, the Sabrova. This is Captain Thykir Shran. We've received your signal. What happened here? I see. Ever since they acquired their cloaking device, they've been getting bold, even for Klingons. You're lucky to be alive, Cadet. Which reminds me, you're on Captain Schaefer's ship. Where is he? And did you follow his orders? I see. Unfortunate. I served with Anton on the Endeavor. He was a fine officer. We could use more like him. I take it you're the acting captain then? Very well. Schaefer didn't place trust in his officers lightly. If he chose you to be his XO, he knew you could get the job done. I'll expect the same. Our first order of business is getting your ship and crew to safety. We'll escort you to make sure you get back in one piece. I'm sure they are. And if they're foolish enough to come back looking for a fight, they'll get one. In the meantime, set a course for our position. Sobrova, out. Click on a shield that is low on power to direct power to it. This will divert power from your other shields. Since we're doing a tutorial, uh, you might be wondering why we're not doing a lot of damage on. Well, here's the tutorial. Don't worry, after level 10, your shields get battered and your armor gets bad as well. So, the wolf now fights in competition. No matter. to check in on another Starfleet vessel when we received your distress signal. That vessel is still not responding to hails. 
Considering what happened to you, I'm beginning to fear the worst. I'm going to investigate, and I want you to join me. If the Klingons are up to no good in that system, I'll need backup. I know it's asking a lot, but we're at war. Consider this a field promotion, Cadet. You have your orders. So there you've got their new mission items. When we complete the mission. New engine, new phasers, a new crewman, another gun. Sometimes you do missions, you've got multiple items, you can only have one, pick one. So you have to do it again if you want the other items. This, this feels wrong, doesn't it? I mean, the captain just got killed by a House Mokai matriarch over something she thought we had on board. Shouldn't we be chasing her instead? <sighs> You're right. You're right. For all we know, this Ja'ula could be behind what happened to that other ship. We should help them. I'll get back down to engineering, Captain. We are ready to go to warp when you are. Now please just fix the ship. Stop complaining. We've arrived, Captain. I'm reading the Ticonderoga dead ahead. Our orders are to make contact with them and find out why they haven't responded to our hails. So a new crew member, science officer, with shield drain. That's good, because then we can lower the enemy shields. A lot quicker than using um, phasers. And obviously we've got new engine and another phaser. Stronger phaser. So we fit that to the ship. I mean, there's literally hundreds of hundreds of items throughout the game, and there's a lot of set items, and you can do faction um, quests as well, where you keep doing missions to keep uh, the representatives okay or happy, and then they give you uh, set items at the end of it. for local interference now hailing frequent can't say i was expecting either of you out here care to fill me in we weren't able to contact you earlier we were escorting these cadets back to the soul system after they were ambushed by klingons under the circumstances i thought it wise to investigate your situation here Apologies. I suspect the local anomalies are interfering with our comm systems. I'm sorry to ask this, but where is Captain Schaefer? That's quite the story, Cadet. The loss of Captain Schaefer is a blow. He was one of our best. I realize this is a trial by fire for all of you. You're doing well. Hang in there. Starfleet has received reports of Klingon activity in the region. We've been ordered to check things out here. They might be hiding in the cluster and using this as a staging ground. As you can see, the area plays havoc with our systems. We've already launched nine probes. Now that they're active, we can do an in-depth scan of the area. We could use your help. If all three ships collect data, we should be able to complete this quickly and deal with any Klingons we might come across. Any questions? Hmm. I can see why Schaefer picked you to be his XO. Don't let that confidence get the better of you. If you need help, ask for it. Starfleet needs each and every one of you. This may be the worst simple trip to Vulcan ever. Bet you wish you were back at the academy, huh, Tilly? You can set your ship's power levels to have a focus on attack, defense, speed, or balance. Yeah, well, we'll change it all to uh, maximum damage. Best way. We don't do over 
but you don't do 125 da damage to anybody. You don't really do any damage at all. Picking up large pockets of radiation, but there's something off in the Durant here. Are you seeing the same ETA radiation levels that we are? I'm not sure that a normal scan will be enough. We might need to do a full multiphasic reading. My science officer believes that performing a tachyon pulse wave scan will solve our sensor issue. Perform your final scans, and then report back. The deflector is realigned to emit a reverse tachyon pulse wave, Captain. Reading an impulse spike. Captain, it's the Klingons! Been a tutorial. Uh, be too close to explosions. They will blow up your ship. Did we just fight the Klingons again? Hey, did did we just fight the Klingons again? Ticonderoga is under attack. Use full impulse to reach her quickly. I know what the Klingons are up to here. They're using this system as a staging area. Something big is about to go down. We're picking up a large number of inbound warp signatures. Their most likely target is the Corvan system. There's a dilithium mine there, one we can't afford to lose to the Klingons. The Ticonderoga was badly damaged and they took heavy casualties as well. Medical tells me Captain Durant was injured, but she'll recover in time. We're still working on triage and restoring the ship's critical systems, which leads me to our next course of action. I want you to go to the Corvan system and warn them about the Klingons. The Sabroba is better equipped to hold off further Klingon attacks and assist the Ticonderoga here. We'll do what we can to delay them, but it'll be up to you to warn the people of Corvan. We have to make our way to Corvan as soon as we can, Captain. I just hope we're not too late to warn them. Are you ready to go? Come across this bug. Uh, it was noticed on the forums as well. Basically, you can't walk out. You're just basically on a loop, constant loop, going around in circles. And they have fixed it now, three days later. And hopefully, it's working for everybody else out there. But we'll leave it here, and we'll carry on in part two. That splits out. That is all.